this school year has been weird. Good, but it's been an adjustment. That's what we're going to chat about today with our update number one of homeschool year number 14. And life has been crazy the past few weeks. That's why you're getting another car video. <laughs> um, Matthew has twice, has swam twice a week in the afternoon, which is the time I would normally be taping at home. So that's why I'm here in the car. Now, I just, if you're new to the channel, Welcome, I'm Trisha. I have two kids still at home and my daughter is off at college for her first year. My boys are um, in ninth grade and seventh grade. And that first year off at school is why this, part of why this year has been a weird transition year for us. And I'm gonna talk about her first because, because I've gotten several of you asking. <laughs> so thank you for those, for those comments. I am not, though, going to give you a lot. And here is why. She's now officially an adult. And as my kids have gotten older and I've been on YouTube longer, I've really been trying to be really cognizant that this is my choice to be on, not theirs. And the stories I share, those are really their stories, but I'm the one choosing to put them out there. So, I've been trying to be really careful about that. And now that I have an official adult, I'm trying to be even more careful about that. So, I did ask her permission before I um, am sharing anything, but, but that's why. Now, if you are interested in a video about, about that adjusting to having an adult child and adjusting to having a child in college and those sorts of things. I would love to do a sit down, you know, more dedicated video about that. So if you'd be interested in that, leave me a comment down there. As a general update with her though, she is doing so well. School classes are going fine. There's been one class that's been a little bit of a struggle for her, but it was, she's do her grades steadily improving. And she thinks that really it was more that she just had to learn how to do what they were requiring that makes sense and like they have weekly quizzes so she had to figure out like what the what the professor was going to be asking and how to best study for it and all of those little details she did say that the workload overall was more than what she was expecting not necessarily more harder than what she was expecting so that I do think I shared that, that was kind of one of my things that I would and I did share this about things that I'm going to do differently in high school with Ben is I didn't know what the bar should be for her really and so I definitely feel like I I could have pushed her more so yes I could have <laughs> this is a short answer but she and her roommate are adjusting um they get along well adjusting to having someone in the room always is always an adjustment but that's you know that's true for all college students and she's got a job on campus she is involved with a couple volunteer you know organizations on campus and seems to be really doing well she was just home for fall break and it did me good to see her and I hope it did her good to be home for a bit so there's a short update on her now Next up is my seventh grader, Matthew. If you've never watched one of these, I always do just short little updates. I don't share about every subject, etc. each time. It's just whatever, whatever is on my mind to share. So with Matthew, two things I'm gonna share about today are his pre-algebra class, which is going well. We do it through my homeschoolmathclass.com for him. Elizabeth did those classes as well but Ben Ben doesn't he uses Mr. D if you're looking for that down there I also have a video of just different algebra and high school level classes so check it out anyway this is the book they use it is a traditional textbook but the teacher is absolutely fantastic uh it's it's a fantastic book I shouldn't have said it but I was just sharing, it's a, just a traditional textbook. It's Lyle's, 
but you can get them really inexpensively on Amazon used. Um, Mrs. Perkins is fantastic. Matthew's adjusting it. <laughs> she is very like, she's a fantastic teacher. She's really nice. But at the beginning of the year, she's very like, this is what you need to do. This is how we're gonna do it. Um, firm, I guess, but she's fantastic. So there was a little bit of a <laughs> transition as, as he's learning to handle that kind of a situation and whatever, but he's doing really well with it. We, both my kids went through Beast Academy 5. Matthew has moved into pre-algebra with Mrs. Perkins. Ben moved in straight into algebra with Mr. D. Matthew, I believe, could handle the, mm, the math of algebra instead of going through pre-algebra. However, from experience, I knew that there was a definite transition with moving into a live online class where you have set deadlines and those kind of details that Ben didn't get with Mr. D because we used the self-paced version for him. And since Matthew's just a seventh grader, yes, he could have, I'm confident he could have handled the math of algebra. But putting him down a level where the math isn't so hard, but he still has that time where he can learn how to manage the class, I think for him was absolutely the right choice. Elizabeth didn't. She wouldn't. She did algebra with Mrs. Perkins as a seventh grader. But, but for Matthew, I just feel like the pre-algebra course was the right one. He's learning how to, you know, be more independent with it. And that has been really good. And he's slowly getting the, all the habits involved in it. Again, I knew it was going to be a transition, and that's why I went with pre-algebra. Now, something else that's been a transition as far as working more independently, which is one of the big goals for this school year, is is that I'm just not just in homeschool, but in our home and everything. I am trying to make everybody, everybody <laughs> less dependent on me for a variety of reasons, but mostly for my sanity. So, <laughs> next up in that regard is Pandia Press's Astronomy Level 2. Now, this is advertised as a 6th to 10th grade course, or a 7th to 10th grade course. I would have a hard time, as is, calling it a 10th grade course. The other part of that is it's only a 12 chapter book, which is supposed to be roughly a 12 week course, 12 to 16 week course. So it's not going to be a full year. If you're interested in more about this, I do have a video that I will try to leave, try to remember to leave down there. As for the course itself, he's really enjoying it. What we decided to do was that one week he would do a chapter of this and then the next two weeks he would do other things. So we have some books that we've been adding in, um, including this one's the one he's reading right now, Astronauts, Women on the Final Frontier. It's a graphic novel about different women who have, let's guess it's based on true actual women astronauts. So um, he's been going through this one this week. So during a two week break, we've been doing books. You know what, and by the way, if you are interested in graphic novels and learning, looking for some title recommendations, he and I did a video together that I'll leave down there. Anyway. During those two extra weeks, he does some different astronomy podcasts, books. We have a couple great courses that he's working through. He's been, I hate to say taking because it's more just watching the videos, but taking a course called The Violent Universe. It's through edX, edX.org, but it's a college level course in Australia or someplace. Anyway, it's a free course. He's been working through that. So we're just kind of filling it up with various things, some documentaries, movies, whatever. So we do that in a three week rotation and it's been a really good way to help him learn to use more of a textbook setup and that independence while the other weeks, um, doing a more freestyle learning of whatever is really interesting him. 
And we've also been including in some of that some extra history. This year's history is kind of a weird mix. And so I'm pulling in a lot of history based on what he's doing in literature and what he's doing in science and just kind of meshing it all together. So those are two updates for Matthew. My notes are over here. <laughs> I'm in my card, I've got like, you're on a cardboard box and to get lifted up over my wheel, my notes are on a whiteboard over here. <laughs> it's quite the setup. Anyway, Ben, he is really enjoying geometry. And I am so glad because I did not like geometry. I didn't like it when I was in high school. I didn't like it when I had to help Elizabeth with it. So the fact that Ben is enjoying it <laughs> has been fantastic. Also, I'm not really surprised. There's something about the way, like, the logic of geometry works so much better with his brain. I love algebra. Elizabeth loved algebra. But the geometry has been Ben's. And that's fantastic. The other part of that is that I am, I didn't bring my iPad, I was going to show you. We use the GoodNotes app for him for a variety of subjects, but especially with math, it has been so good. Ben is not diagnosed with dysgraphia, but I treat him as if he has dysgraphia. And if you don't know, that's a, I'm drawing a blank on how to describe it, but basically, Producing from here on a written paper is difficult. An iPad or tablet with a stylus can help, um, can make it easier for some people with dysgraphia for writing. We, it has been so important with geometry this year. It was important with algebra last year, but I'm finding it even more so with geometry. Um, especially because like we can use the shapes feature to draw neater like, triangles and that sort of thing. It's been so good. If you have a student who struggles with writing in various ways, consider what an iPad might do for you. And if you want to know more about Good Notes, again, let me know down there and I will do a dedicated, dedicated video for it. And the last thing I'm going to share with you for this video is Build Your Library 9 for Ben. It has been really good. What I am finding though is that Ben thinks it's, it's too easy per week as far as the amount of work. It may be that he is just a fast enough reader that he's getting through all of it quicker than, than some other students. I don't know, but he is definitely finishing much sooner than what he should be. So starting next week, we're going to start putting a little more in his weeks and see if, see if that's a better pacing for him. Or I just need to find some other stuff to fill in his days because he's getting done much too quickly for a high school student. And I would love to know how your school year is going. Leave it down there and then click on the video on the screen to go check out what my current homeschool favorites are. Thanks for watching.